So I, uh, back again, we were, I couldn't get any time for myself to video while away helping those guys elk hunt on the west coast of Vancouver Brown. But on the way home, I did some filming and as well I did some river filming, which I love doing. I finally brought the rod with me this morning and when I was way up on the bank up high where this gravel road comes down the river I could just see through a hole in the trees and there's salmon right over there by that grass tuft of grass over there we're just down river and about uh it looked to be about five yards from shore so it's a little deep but I got my my camera set up that I made myself and I made it out of stainless steel welding rod about a four or three foot piece got this little bracket mount here the GoPro jimmied it on there and it houses a camera so it actually it will tighten it up how it works is <clears throat> as long as the camera's above this this should skip off the bottom of the rocks although these cases do take a beating I've gone through two already but I haven't gone through a camera and then I tie the fishing line I, I just bent <clears throat> eyes in the end of the steel welding rod and I put some electrician's tape on here to hold the knot and then protect the knot from getting bashed and anything and make it last a little longer. It seems to be working really well. The only tough thing is, is when I cast it out to go down here, I have to have this float on my side as it goes down river to ensure the lens is done. So it's almost like playing blackjack. Every deal is different, right? So I, uh, I casted it out the other day and it took me 12 casts till it finally flipped around the right way for me. It's very frustrating. But anyway, here we go. I'm gonna cast this out, I'm gonna see what's in that river, and I'm gonna share it with all you later on. Well, that was more frustrating than not without my waders. That was a silly move. I'm gonna come back later on today with my waders and get right out there and film that river properly, efficiently. <laughs> I wanna see what's down there. It might be boring to some, but I mean, I love catching fish. But I'll tell you what, it's just so addicting to me to film stuff. I love filming things, but I especially love filming what's in the river because typically we don't know. We go down there and start fishing. We don't know if there's fish in there. We don't know if there's steelhead in there. We don't know. And it's a mystery. And it's so exciting when you hook into a fish. But I find it really, really exciting to be able to float that camera down and just look at them. And videotape them in their element and see exactly what they are doing and how they do it and where they hide and where they sit. And reactions to the camera is pretty cool. But anyway, on the way back from that elk hunt this past weekend, I went to help those guys. Unfortunately, we had a run in with some poachers. We kind of trashed the hunt. And we really put in a big effort. <clears throat> to look for them and as a result I saw a lot of miles of new country I hadn't seen before. We climbed, we, we drove up old deactivated logging roads to mountain tops, sides of mountains, valley bottoms, and hikes and rivers and I did a lot of filming of what we saw so I'm going to share that as I share emails today and some of that footage. 
and it's funny, you know, the friends that I'm with, they are full-on West Coast people. Like, one of my friends has been a lifetime logger, lifetime fishing fishing guide, fishing lodge owner on the West Coast of Vancouver Island, surrounded by numerous reports from various people, First Nations and non-First Nations people. And it's funny, with the various people that I know, I know not even bring up the topic. There's a lot of people out there that I know, they, they don't even have a, a slight decimal point of interest in this topic, because they haven't seen anything like that, they've never thought about it, whatever it is, I don't care, I don't push it, I don't even bring it up. I never brought up the topic once this whole weekend. Didn't need to. But it, on that note, it's another thing that is amazing though, if I put myself in their place, um, you know, as we went around that classic zone, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel like there was anything around. Although there was elk, a few, very few deer. The deer have been decimated by something, I don't know what. There's a handful of wolves around there. Um, there's a fair amount of black bear, and there's a fair amount of people as well. But it is amazing, I can, I can relate to the people who think this topic is a joke, or they think there's no bloody way. Because if you're with us this past couple of days in the country we traveled and what we saw, where you're always looking for traps up the banks of the steep, you know, the, where the logging roads cut on the banks of the steep mountains, it's steep, and you got your clay bank, dirt, soft bank that goes to the logging road, and you, you just can't hide the tracks. You all can't hide the tracks, nothing can. They cross that road, boom, there's a track in the dirt. And I am looking for tracks nonstop while I'm hunting as a rule. It's just my number one go to. If there's soft dirt anywhere, I'm looking for tracks. Do we see any Sasquatch tracks? Nope. Do we hear any? Nope. Any signs of them whatsoever? Not that I noticed, not that I'm looking too hard, but nothing. Do I feel uneasy anywhere? No. Do I pack a gun with me? Nope. And you gotta think a lot how many people have that same experience all day, every day, every single time they're on the woods. Nothing to worry about, no pressure, no tracks, no sounds, nothing. Never felt threatened, never experienced a thing. And there's a pile of people like that. Millions, right? So, but it is a little, it can add to be the, add to the confusion more of people who are interested in the topic or have seen something when they experience all that country like I did the past couple days and there's just nothing there. And it could and it just, if you hadn't seen one for yourself, it would be very easy to dismiss the topic. Very easy to shrug it off and go, oh my god, yeah, right, what a bunch of coats. There's so, there's, it's just, there's something's going on with this topic. There's just some factor going on with various people who do see, who do hear, who do experience. And there's a factor missing. For those that don't, I think, I think, maybe possibly, right? You know, a lot of people say you are tagged. Once you've seen one, you are tagged, and, and you will see them numerous times and be aware of them throughout your lifetime. And I'm thinking that may hold a lot of water. It's very, it can be very confusing. It's a confusing topic, but then again, so is life. Life is very confusing, especially today, now that we have numerous people dictating what we get to see or hear or speak about, right? It's very bizarre this lifetime. And again, I would please encourage as many people as I can to get out there, get out in the real world, shut the idiot box off, lose these things for at least a whole day, or as many days as you can. Take your shoes off, ground yourself out for 15 minutes, and, uh, and get back in tune with the real world. All right? Too many people are out of tune with the current with the real world, with what they were born to experience. Anyway, where's it? Here we go. I don't want to babble too much. I got things to do. And uh, I want to get some some shares out here. All right. Now, what do we got? This is a recent one I grabbed out of the inbox. Listen to this. It's titled Lots of Tracks Plus Picks. Tonight, October 12th, 2021, my friend Larry and I were going into the state forest. Lake Panasofki, Florida, with Lakochi State Forest. With Lakochi State Forest, Jumper Creek Trailhead. We were looking for a new hunting area, 10,000 acre section of forest at about 4 p.m. We parked the truck at the area at the end of the road, I guess two miles in front of the entrance. We decided to backtrack down the road and cut in. The woods is made up of swamp and woods with the with Lakochi River, with Lakuchi River, on the back side. We were following in on the edge of the swamp about 10 minutes in and noticed a 50-foot tree shaking. 
about 75 feet away, and the top broke off. Just thought it was the wind until I noticed nothing else was moving. Still didn't think too much of it, but I listened to so much that when we got closer to the area, I had to check up in the trees. Nothing, so I just brushed it off. The swamp edge circled us back to the road, so we decided to cross the road and check that area out. We saw signs of pigs rooting everywhere. Came back to the road and started heading back to the truck. I noticed an old rib bone on the side of the road and soon found a bunch of other bones spread near the road. I decided to watch for tracks on the, tr on the side of the road in the muddy ditch. I saw muddy raccoon tracks in the dry, which I thought was weird. So I looked to the ditch and saw what I thought was a track where the animal slipped and the hooves split. It was pretty big for a deer or pig. I looked to the side and saw barefoot tracks everywhere in the mud. It looked like it was pacing back and forth in the ditch watching the woods. We were just in. Some looked fresh and some older. They weren't huge, but they were the size of my 12 wide boot. Probably long. I thought, who would be out here in bare feet? Water moccasins all over and enough mosquitoes to carry you away. I told my friend, do you believe what we just found? It freaked me out. I had to take a bunch of pics. I know you don't care, but like you say, others want to see. I went home and told my wife she kind of thinks I'm stupid, believing, until she saw the pics. Now she doesn't want me out there. I think I'll be okay until I see one. That will probably change my attitude. Thanks for what you do. Be safe. Here are the pics. There they are. And there is your classic Sasquatch looking print. Very human like. Typically a little wider and flatter on the bottom. There you go, little one. There's the big toe pushing off. The whole nine yards flattened out in grass. And there you go. Another one. More people just became members of the club of no return. One after the other. Doesn't stop. It's amazing. It's crazy down in Florida. I had turkey hunting down in Florida, ran around a lot of the forest down there, and it is pretty thick, crazy ass jungle, isn't it? Thanks for sending that in, man. Thank God your wife doesn't think you're crazy. But it's funny how many people question the word of people there family, friends, husbands, wives, girlfriends, whatever. It's amazing how many people still question their word. I need a, I need a photograph. I need some video. I need to see it for myself. Kinda of weird, man. You gotta start trusting your neighbor again. Everybody's gotta start trusting people again somehow. The amount of divide going on inside of here is unbelievable. What do we got here? Mark it off as red. Well, first of all, thank you, thank you for being our voice. New problem. And you're so well read. I have some reservations about telling my encounters from the fall of 2019. Fell asleep with my cousin's lazy boy after food and beer. Woke up at 4.15 a.m., decided to walk home about a half mile downhill. I live in a city of about 30 people, 30,000 people. I live one house from our local parks. It's about three quarters of a mile long and maybe 60 feet deep and a football field wide, wide at its widest point. Well, walking down the hill just about to the bottom of the hill and at the bottom of the park where I heard a very loud tree knock, it sounded like about a five inch piece of maple smacking a smooth bark beech tree. You know the sound the person hits one out of the park, but much louder. I told my cousin about what happened, and he said it was someone effing around. I didn't believe that. Living in town, I have a problem with cats marking their territory. I was bitching to my buddies one day about it, and a friend of mine says, this around your house and mark your territory. Well, after stepping off my porch into a pile of cat crap, I had it. So you can't whip it out in town, so I pissed in a jug for a couple weeks, and when I was out in the garage, well, needless to say, it was very strong, I poured it into a spray bottle and sprayed it everywhere around the house. Sorry for a long email. My second encounter, well after food and drinks at my cousin's house again, I woke up in the chair and walked home again at 4.30 a.m. Walked upstairs and sat down on the couch. It screamed slash roared at me. So loud, even through the wall, I felt it inside me. It didn't come through the window two feet from me, it came through the wall 25 feet away. I picked up my phone and ran to the window to take a pic, but I didn't see anything. It was so loud, like nothing I've ever heard before. I've had it my whole life and seen mountain lions, three black panthers, and a half mile from our local college. This wasn't anything I've ever heard before. Well, I guess marking my territory wasn't a good idea. All it did was piss him off. I'm so thankful he waited for me to get inside. 
I don't know if I could have taken that up close. The reason I have had reservations about telling what happened is that someone might do what I did to get a response. All I can say is this, you and this, you do this and you may not get the response you're looking for. Maybe the a-holes, the BFRO might have a chance. Third encounter, if it didn't happen to me, I wouldn't have believed it. The first part of July this year, you read an email from a First Nations guy talking about the lost practice of shape-shifting. Well, it's still being done. 4.30 a.m., walking home. I walk real quiet when I, when a 70, I walk real quiet when a 70 to 80 pound wolf came up out of the park and stepped broadside looking down the hill. Never heard or looked up the hill. I was frozen in my tracks, wondering what it was. Looked as to where it was looking and thought to myself, Hey, dumbass, that's a big effing wolf. I only glanced just below him for a second, when it wasn't a wolf, but a woman in jeans getting up from all fours. She stood up and wiped her hands down in front of her shins. She looked to be about 35 years old, never changed her line of sight. I know crazy. That's what I would say to anyone, but I was there. The end of the park was maybe 150 feet further down, and what doesn't make any sense if a person was walking out of a park at 4.30 in the morning down the access road out of the, out of the park where there is a street light just past the gate, would choose to climb up a 40 degree bank when the clear path was lit up. I only wish I would have never taken my eyes off for that second. You can use my name and place. I don't care what people think. I know the truth. Dondi Kilbury, Jamestown, New York. Thank you for what you've started here and a seat at the table. And sorry about macaroni. Hope the move went well and love your Camaro. For you, feel free, free to contact me if you like. It's an incredible freaking story, man. And you know as well as I do, a lot of people are gonna go, uh, who knows what they're gonna say. A lot of people are gonna roll their eyes when they hear that, right? Because it's not common. I, actually, it's probably the first time I've read something like that here. Without a doubt, I don't recall anybody seeing a wolf being replaced by a human. Just like that. Can I say that didn't happen? Nope, I wasn't there. Can I say, can I say it's a made up story? I don't know, sounds pretty like, sounds like a pretty confident person sharing that story with us, doesn't it? Leaves his whole name, where it was, and contact me if you like. So, has this happened to many other people? I don't know, I've heard of, I've heard of that happening myself, but, I can see why, imagine if you did see that for real, yourselves, not the, not the person who submitted the email, but imagine if you saw something like that yourself, would you be typing about it online? Would you be sharing it with the world? That site alone would be something else to wrap your frickin' head around, if that's what you saw, and then try to share that with today's community? Look out for some shit falling out of the sky and getting dumped all over you for sharing something like that, right? Can we discard it and all think that it didn't happen? I wouldn't. Not with what I've seen. Not with what I know. Not what. Not with a lot of the realities going on on the planet today. I am probably one of the few who is convinced that anything, anything can and possibly will happen in life. Just the fact that we are here does not make sense to me at all. It's amazing. There's a very many amazing things going on that we can't explain, but it, we accept as normal. <laughs> and then the same, we are the beings who don't make sense. We shouldn't even be here. Who are we to say what is or isn't, right? Without seeing it firsthand. Thanks for sending that in, man. I don't envy you having that experience. What do you do with it, right? Who do you share that with today in today's community, right? Pretty crazy. All right, this is titled, Let's Try This Again. All right, let's do it. Hey, Steve, this is pretty much the fourth email I've sent. Two are in your email. One got erased by me. That's weird. I don't think you can erase emails from somebody's inbox, can you? So pissed about that one. I'm writing again because I feel there's so many people who are writing in with the stories that if I leave mine in the background, it won't be seen. 
Anyhow, on my experience. A friend and I were out one evening in the summer of 93, I do believe, and we were trying to catch up a few, scratch up a few clams. I've been staying with this friend for a small amount of time. We'd been studying the Bible. The reason for studying the Bible for me was that I thought it would help get my wife back, who had left me because just weeks, who had left me just weeks before. Back to climbing. I wasn't doing a very good scratching up an amount that would be sufficient for what we wanted, so I started to get pissed off. As a result, I decided to go sit down and take a break. As I was sitting there, I started to think that God hadn't helped me much, and in my head I thought to myself, power, what power is there? Since I hadn't seen any results in my impatient couple of weeks, well, it wasn't long before I got my answer, because before I could even get the whole sentence finished off in my head, the sound of snapping and crashing branches in a fir tree came from directly behind me, scaring me onto my feet. After I turned around, all I could see was the branches, about 30 feet from the ground, were waving up and down like someone had jumped from the top and hit every limb on the way down. These weren't small limbs either. They would have held a full-grown black bear, no problem. My friend, who was still climbing, looked up at me from about 100 yards away and wondered what in the hell I was doing. He thought I was mad about the whole climbing thing. And I thought I threw my clam fork, and thought I threw my clam fork into the woods. After I told him it wasn't me who had made the noise, we decided to walk up by the tree to investigate. After a noise like that, we figured there would be branches laid everywhere but not a single one was laid on the ground or even hanging from it. But just the underneath were what looked like hoof prints. About three of them, with three inch indents into the ground and four inches wide. Last we knew, cows couldn't fly or climb trees. So that was out, chuckle chuckle. Sasquatch or any of these cryptids were never in our heads until now. We just chalked it up to the unknown and let it be. Then went back to climbing for the rest of the time. Come towards the end of the tide, which for some reason seemed to come a whole lot later than the previous day, which was odd, if you know how tides work, we decided to help the boat into the water because it was getting dark. We had no lights of any kind. To add to our dilemma, the boat was dropped by the tide between the two small rocks, which would have been bad, but having a flat bottom boat laying in the mud makes for a lot of makes for some serious suction. I believe it was then, when we started trying to move the boat, that a god-awful screaming howl came from the alders up by the shore, accompanied by some of the most intense crashing and snapping of trees I'd ever seen this side of a skitter. My friend and I looked at each other like, what the hell was that? Then after a few seconds, we tried to make sense out of it by saying it was a person, even though it was way too loud and too intense for anything we'd ever heard. And both of us had had our share of being in the woods, hunting, fishing, and playing as kids. Then it happened two more times while we were frantically trying to unwedge the boat and get it to water. After the third and last scream and crashing sounds, we had it far enough so we could hear bubbles under the boat and through sheer will alone managed to get it the rest of the way and floating. With clam forks in hand and a makeshift club made from the seat to stretch across the skiff, we finally started her up and watched the shore just waiting for some monstrosity to come barreling down across the flats. Never didn't see anything though. We heard enough. That's all there is to the story, Steve. Please be careful out there and God bless. We appreciate your sacrifice and all you do. Sean Reed. Share my name if you want, I don't care. Okay, Sean, share it. Thanks for that, man. And uh, just from the couple clues that you dropped there, um, work on your patience, all right? Work on your patience. Patience, patience can help you a lot in life and impatience can ruin a lot in life including relationships all right patience patience it's something that i've tried to teach hundreds of people over the years doing what i do it's a tough thing to teach people being patient some people i know friends of mine are some of the most impatient people i've ever met in my life and i feel frustrated for them but anyway it sounds like you must have been in the pacific northwest somewhere right with your mention of fir trees skitters and clams that all goes on in my backyard Anyway, I don't know what's going on with the noises and the branches breaking and then nobody finds any sign of it. But how many times has it been reported? Freaking dozens. Dozens and dozens, right? It's a bizarre, it's a bizarre thing to be able to, to impose that sound on human beings and cover up any sign of it. How's that going down? How's it going down? 
My story's getting lost? LOL, private message. All right, I'm getting a handful of emails from a couple of, I've been getting emails from a handful of people the past months about some psycho, abusive, deranged prick who has, a, I think, possibly two different handles he uses on the, on the uh, YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And I have, <clears throat> I don't, I don't play, uh, I'm not, I'm not the principal. You know, people email me, can you stop this person from doing this or this person's really doing this to me? It's like, hey, we're all grown ups, just ignore it, all right? I'm not here to be a referee. I'm not the class teacher, all right? I'm one of you. We're all in this together. We're adults. Don't read it. First off, is somebody online saying something that's eating you? Just don't read it. I did have a couple screenshots sent to me, and, and these this person's right up to freaking lunch. And I've had a couple of friends of mine that do go over the the uh, the comments for me if I ever ask them to. Like I said, hey man, if you, if you come across a post by such and such, let me know. And if you can find it, and they're the absolutely abusive maniac. Let me know. And we'll try to see what we can do and get them to leave. So anyways, just so you all know, we've been complaining about these two handles, I'm not going to promote them, is uh, there is a couple few of us that watch for these, this character. Obviously the character is a complete moron because we, what you do is you find the, the, the person, you click on their name or their profile picture, whatever have you, and then it takes you to their page and there's three dots in the upper right hand corner. You click on that and you can block them. And it also says how long ago they started their account. So this maniac keeps on, because you have to then create a new email address to be able to create a new YouTube handle. This maniac has, has done this probably, who knows how many times we've sought out, found this person and deleted and blocked them. And they keep coming back. It's amazing. And also a sign of something's really seriously wrong between their ears. So. Um, all you can do, I suggest to all you, because this has been a bit of a problem for a lot of people, this is a real common email, is um, number one, ignore them. Don't reply to them. Don't even go to the comment section. You know what I mean? It's There's so many loopy people in the internet world, it really makes the, the comment section anywhere a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. Sadly, right? And especially if you've got it in you to get angry at abusive people like I do. Sometimes I will take the bait. Have you seen me in the past? It makes me grind my teeth and I want to go seek him out and strangle the shit out of him. <laughs> so just ignore him. But when we do come across, when we can, we got the time. Um, I do have a couple people who alert me to it. Show me, tell me where it is. I'll seek it out. Find that person. I'll delete him. So, okay, just so you know. I'm deleting the psychopaths, but you, you can't delete him from the internet. It's unfortunate. And on that note too, it is kind of bizarre. Isn't it bizarre? I don't know who started the trend back in the early days, but I, I can remember when I first went on to a hunting forum, a friend of mine showed me that oh, everybody's there, there's tens of thousands of people, there. everybody from BC is there, everybody's there, you gotta go on there, okay, what do you do? Well, you gotta come up with a name, why? So at my time, my email, which my very first email ever was a friend of mine, a fisheries officer, said, hey, want me to set up an email for you? When the internet first came out, and I'm like, a what? <laughs> he goes, what do you want your email to be? I'm like, I don't know, well, you gotta come up with something, and I... So I was a professional guide at the time. So I pro guide 66 and date of birth. And that's what I put on there. And that turned into my handle for the hunting forum. And that's how I got a handle for the hunting forum. But still it always kind of confused me why so many people had to come up with a handle. Why? I, don't, I still don't understand that part today. Why do so many people have to come up with, including YouTube, YouTube Anywhere, it's just a trend. It's just the trend is what to do you make up a handle for yourself. I don't get it. If you got something to say, why don't you want your name attached to your words? Why don't you want people to know who you are? I don't get it. I don't understand that part. Um, I don't think it's really right myself, unless of course you're a minor children. I can understand that possibly. You don't want children to be um, exposed all over the internet, I guess. I don't know. It's a confusing thing for me anyway. Why? do people not put their full names if they are going to voice thoughts or opinions or say something even nasty or kind to other strangers in the world. You're like, hey man, my name is Steve Isdall. Currently live just outside of Sprout Lake on Vancouver Island. 
that's me, here I am, and this is what I got to say. That wasn't too painful, was it? Anyway, it's a babble morning this morning. Let me get on with it. Just so you know, we keep our eyes open for when we get numerous emails like this about, somebody just emailed me about this character. Sorry, it was a private message from me. Might have got lost, lost you there. So uh, just so you know, uh, yeah, we're keeping an eye out for the abuse of maniacs and we delete them every chance we get, all right? All right, what do we got? Encounters from a retired law op enforcement officer. Thanks to all you do, spreading the truth has gotten to be a thing of the past. I, like many others, are with you, and the time is now to stand up to these pricks lying to us, trying to force new world order slash socialism via the pandemic. Grant over. My first encounter was in the early 80s in East Tennessee, where I now know Scott Carpenter has proof of these beings there at Royal Blue Campbell County. I was in my early teens with a bolt-action 12-gauge shotgun and a pocket of full of slugs. The adult I was hunting with said, walk up this logging road about three quarters of a mile, then drop off the side of the hill and sit and wait in daylight. When it's got into my spot, I felt overwhelmed with fear slash dread and a feeling of to, a feeling to leave now. I thought, no, I'm just a scared teenager who, whose mind is playing tricks. I'm going to stay, and I felt like that till daylight. We hunted there for years, and I always felt watched and a pressure to leave. Never knew till years later it could be the Sabe. Second encounter, I was 18 or 19, and a friend that was a veteran police officer and I were hunting in Fentress County. We had an F3 tornado come through that day. Ooh. We found out after returning home, no cell phones back then. I was in a climber about 20 feet up a pine when the sky turned greenish black. Winds picked up, raining sideways, quarter size hail. So we climbed down, dove, drove into town to dry clothes and a laundromat, ate dinner, and returned to sleep in the truck to hunt the next morning. We were in an 87 Dodge Raider. Seats reclined and the rainstorm continued. At around 1 or 2 a.m., we were both awake in total darkness. He whispered, are you awake? I said, yes. He said, someone is outside the truck. And I agreed. He said on the count of three, we would turn the headlights on and we would get out pistols at the ready. When he turned the headlights on, we exited the truck and there was the loudest scream slash roar and the lights were partially blocked. At the moment, a large dark figure ran across the muddy pipeline road on two legs into the pine forest with us in chase until my buddy caught the attention caught my attention yelling to stop running saying we're going in a circle so we went back to the truck and the hood was dented in to the point it had to be replaced to this day he refuses to talk about it there we go again I don't get it we left that night and didn't hunt there again as we pulled out the headlights showed the path of the destruction this thing made entering the pines, limbs broken up to 9 or 10 feet. Third encounter, fast forward 2011, sitting in 15th ladder stand, sitting in 15 foot ladder stand in the Gillis County, Tennessee, overlooking a field. In Gillis County, Tennessee, overlooking a field, with my back to a creek and ridge, when a golf ball sized rock came flying over my head landing in the field, 30 ish yards in front of me. I scanned the whole ridge and creek line with my scope. Nothing. That was a long walk out that night to the four wheeler with a pressure slash urge to leave now. Steve, as a retired law enforcement officer, I stand with you and will honor my oath until death. If you're ever down south in Tennessee, we have some great deer and hog hunting and awesome fishing. I love to buy you a beer. So for the loss of Mr. Macaroni, I lost my patrol canine of 10 years to brain cancer. What a kick in the nuts. Stay safe and God bless, God bless Alex. Alex, absolutely appreciate you emailing in. And I'm sure you probably possibly heard the email share of that uh, ex-law enforcement officer in the UK whose actual friendship got hammered on for a few years because of the shared experience. And one guy didn't want to talk about it. And the result was then patching it up after the guy heard his story being read here. So you may want to possibly email your buddy this video 
and maybe some other ones that might help him out and let him know that he's not alone. There's far too many people know now that don't. The cat's out of the bag, man, as you know. And uh, maybe that'll help him out and be able to talk with him, deal with it, and get that shit out of him, right? Shit's a Things that you have to keep inside is full-on cancer. You gotta get the shit out. Just pew it out, get it out, and be safe, and do it. But anyway, when we were down in Tennessee, you know what, Tennessee is the very first state I ever flew into my entire life when I first went to the United States for the first time. And I also shot my very first turkey, ever, on that trip. And I'll admit it, before I went down, we all thought, don't, you now listen to my words, we all thought that turkey hunting was a bit of a joke. You know, we always watch Peterson's Hunting Outdoors and Outdoor Life magazines. Couldn't wait to go to the newsstand and see all those huge bucks and moose and elk and everything and sheep on the, on the magazine shelf and buy all those cool ones until the fall winter season was over and then all of a sudden all it would be would be black bears, bass, and turkey articles. It drove you freaking nuts. And uh, I didn't understand it until I went down there and I actually started shaking with adrenaline as it was just getting light out and hearing those things goblin from up in the roost and then flying down and then I got my first turkey and I was absolutely freaked out. I'll never forget since then I think I hunted turkey in uh, I don't know how many states, at least a half a dozen different states plus I've hunted wild turkey. But anyway, thanks for that opportunity, that offer and if I ever come down, for sure we'll have a beer. For sure. Man, if I come down and hit up all these beer invites, I might be a full-blown alcoholic by the time I get to, back to Canada, if I ever do. I'll tell you what, the way things go in this country, if it wasn't for the hunting and fishing, I would be an American. I would be in the States. I have a lot of friends in, in the United States. Over the years, due to guiding, too, I spent more time with Americans than anybody. Uh, but anyway, I'm babbling. I'll tell you what, yeah, if it wasn't for hunting and fishing, I would probably be down there full-time. past hunting trip in PA. Steve, first of all, let me thank you for being, shall I say it, our voice in this messed up world we now live in. My name is Robert Ikes and I am from Ohio. You can mention my name if you wish. I've been very vocal about my beliefs in this hairy man for a long time and do not and never have cared what others think of that. Good for you. I've been following you for a little while, over a year now, give or take a week or two. You had me hooked from the first reading I heard you do. I've been a believer in Sasquatch or the Grass Man, as we call it in Ohio, for as long as I can remember, and enjoy being out hunting or just out in the wilds. So let me get to the point of this email. About well, 15 to 20 years ago, my dad and brother and I were camping and hunting with some friends that shared our enjoyment in the outdoors. We were in Warren County, Pennsylvania. We set up camp in the middle of a mixture of pines and other types and along the freshwater spring. Camped off a forest road that didn't get much use at that time of year. Anyway. One night, we just finished our hunt for the day and my dad, brother, and I were relaxing in the camp. Just started making our supper. We hunt. just started make, to make our supper. We hunted from dark to dark and we're first back to camp that night. A few minutes later, we could see our friends walking the stone road back to camp with the flashlights on. When they reached the edge of the camp, something just out of the light from our fire and lanterns let out this very loud well, scream, I guess you can call it. Steve, it was loud. It made us jump a little when hearing it. Our friends must have surprised it walking along the road and then shined their lights in the direction of the scream and we saw nothing. I know it wasn't an animal that I was aware of because as you know, after spending so much time in an area, you pick up on the different sounds from the animals. Well, this wasn't anything I've ever heard before. In truth, it sounded more like a scream of a woman would make when they were surprised other than any animal. Here comes the helicopter. I hate background sound. I know you probably can't hear it that well, but I can. It must have followed us and was content to just staying out of the light from camp to watch. This happened. This happened years ago and I still think feel like it happened last night. My second odd happening that week was when my brother and I were hunting in a couple of ground blinds that we made from branches and such in the area. After finding a nice area about 200 yards apart or so in a hollow or a little valley where four of the little mountains from the Appalachians met. After sitting in the blind for a few hours, I heard what sounded like three trees falling from up where I was sitting. 
There was no wind that day or storms in any way to have caused them to fall. It got really quiet and it felt like the hairs in the back of my neck were sending an all-out alarm to me to get the hell out. I was getting very nervous from what I wasn't hearing around me and after a few minutes of that, walked over to ask my brother if he heard it and what he thought it was. I found my brother stand but couldn't see him in it. Turns out he was sleeping on the ground in the blind and didn't hear anything. I shook my head at him and woke him up and I told him what I heard and where it was coming from and that what I thought it was. He just gave me that kind of look like, yeah, right, and I could tell he didn't believe me. I told him that I've had enough of this spot. I was going to call it a day and head back to camp. I didn't see a thing that week and was always looking around me like a scared kid at night after watching a scary movie. I ended up getting my deer with my bow for the year and we packed up the following Saturday for a trip home. I never ventured out to look for tracks or anything, I guess because I was nervous about the whole thing and I didn't want a face-to-face -face encounter with it. Steve, that was years ago, and I still remember it like it just happened. I can't talk to my brother or dad anymore about this. They both passed away since then. I'm sorry to hear that, man. It startles me to this day, and to get this told and off my chest to someone that believes in these things and doesn't judge has helped me so much in dealing with it. That's freaking good to read. Thanks for listening and thanks for helping so many people like me out there that have no one else to share the stories with that doesn't think we all have had have a screw loose. Keep up the good work, Steve, as I will continue to listen. Robert from Ohio. Robert, super stoked that, that helped you out, man. That's what we want to do. It's kind of shitty, I guess. It's just shitty deal and people don't believe anymore. Don't believe their neighbor or their family or friends. Word. It's like, who... Who started it? But then again, you know what? Just when I came home late the other day, and I never watch the news, just so you know, I never ever watch mainstream television news, but unfortunately had it on the other day. Our local news here originates in Vancouver, city of Vancouver. And our medical, our lead medical professional, this psychopath woman, and our government are pumping out propaganda to create divide in the community like you would not believe. It makes me absolutely boil. It was the latest one. They pumped out directly. Are you going to let unvaccinated people into your home this Thanksgiving? The second I read that, I honestly wanted to go fought out to war. Not against the people or my neighbor, but against the people who create divide and make us fight amongst each other. I just only can hope and pray that all of you and the rest of the world see who is doing it to us and do something about it and don't let them win. Thanks for sending that in, man. And good luck to you. Good luck to everybody else. We'll be back shortly with more and more and more and more.